conducted in any mocks, and then the program will proceed with an introduction, then our first panel today, and two more panels tomorrow. Ashley, please. Good afternoon. It's a big honor to get this amazing conference started full of amazing minds and old friends. So it's great to see many friendly faces. The first pyramid, as the story goes, was formed out of the actual story in Arabic legend. According to French anthropologist René Girard, a crowd gathered around the victim and threw stones at her. It was most probably a her, while she crouched on the ground desperately trying to protect her head. The accumulation of stones over the crouching body gave shape to the pyramid. The sacrifice, the tomb, and the monument were all produced in the same act, at the myth of origin of civilization. The second pyramid, the conscious act of replicating the shape of the first, is at the myth of the origin of architecture. Its construction may have been enacted without the violence, maybe as a tomb <coughs> for a deceased dignitary, or as a memorial without a body inside of the tomb. But it did entail all other forms of violence. Slave labor, depletion of natural resources, and importantly, the violence of mimesis. Architecture is the second building. It is born out of the second pyramid, out of the conscious act of rebuilding, whether by repiling the same stones in a tidier or more per permanent stereotomy, or by replicating the forms somewhere else with different stones. The second pyramid, or the first architecture, is therefore inherently, as the title of this conference suggests, reconstruction as violence. This mimetic act, this conscious copying, violates the authenticity of the original while distancing, distancing it and maybe venerating it. It disturbs Plato's old natural order between the originating idea and the original materialization of this idea. No wonder those artists who, ima who imitated nature had to be banished from his republic, his city. But today in Aleppo, with so much rebuilding and republicing needed, the artists are being lured back to the city republic. And boy, what a republic it has become. Mm -hmm. That famed city of stone has been turned into the city of stone. There is actually a parallel act of stoning, regime, at the origin of the city that is important to underscore. The first city, as the story goes, was built over the rubble of the first human settlement. The pattern is the same across Mesopotamia and the Syrian landscape. Whether the settlement itself was stoned over or burned or abandoned and covered with dust, the second city rose above it, a few feet over the rubble of the first, and cumulatively over the centuries created large mounds that resembled hills that stood out against the horizontal expanses of agricultural fields and deserts. Some of these abandoned sites are actually called Rujum. The higher ones, taller ones, are called Tels, or hills. The Tel, which constitutes the core of many of the historic cities in the region, is but the accumulation of rubble over rubble, partly out of sweltering walls, partly out of self-renewal, or is it collective atonement, or is it retribution? This landscape of dotted settlements, of tents, persists today in the region against the stall of urbanization and its destruction. The most prominent and preeminent among tents remains the Tel of Aleppo. The Tel of Aleppo is so prominent, you can see it all the way from here. From this crucial, critical distance that the Aga Khan program has strategically established and nurtured to critically study situations like Aleppo's reconstruction. We are able to ask important questions, thanks to this distance, about the ethical practices and malpractices of reconstruction, about the rights of citizens who are engaged, who are emerging from underneath the region and returning to their beloved tent, about the dubious and violent virtues of origins and of authenticity, about the role of architecture in commemorating, reinterpreting, and redeeming, and about the underlying entanglement between architecture, cities, 
and violence. Thank you, Master Rajat. Thank you, Regent Char, and the other Khan program for providing the critical distance. And thank you to the guest speakers for helping us imagine less violent origins and better futures for our country. Peace.